In this video, we're going to talk about the first set of hydrocarbons called alkanes. And if you remember in the first video, the three types of hydrocarbons we're going to talk about had very similar names. The difference was the one letter. So this time around, we're going to talk about alkanes. The next video, we will talk about alkenes with an E. And then later, we will talk about alkynes with a Y. So alkanes are going to have a single bond, or all your bonds are going to be single bonds. Alkenes will have a carbon-carbon double bond somewhere in the molecule, and alkynes will have a triple bond. So that's just a little bit of a preview to let you know where we are going with these different types. So first off is alkenes. So again, alkanes are hydrocarbons that only have carbon-carbon single bonds. For each type of hydrocarbon, we're going to have a general formula. So for alkene, or sorry, alkanes, that general formula is CnH2n plus 2. So what this means is that if you know the number of carbon atoms, which we are calling n in this case, you can figure out the number of hydrogen atoms by plugging n in, doing 2 times n plus 2. So here's a couple examples of doing that. So if we have 6 carbon atoms, we can do 2 times 6 plus 2 to get the number of hydrogen atoms. So that means that molecule must have 14 hydrogen atoms. We can also reverse this. If we know that there are eight hydrogen atoms, then we know that eight has to come from 2n plus two. So that means if we solve for n, we get three carbon atoms. So go ahead and pause this video and then come back and we'll work through the last two together. See if you can do the last two on your own first. All right, so for nine carbon atoms, we've got two times nine plus two, which is going to be 20 hydrogen atoms. 32 hydrogens means we have two N plus two equal to that. So then there will have to be 15 carbons to have 32 hydrogens. And this ratio comes about because carbon always has to have four bonds. So next we're gonna talk about how to draw alkanes. And to draw alkanes, you're first going to see how many carbon atoms you have, and then connect them with single bonds. So we're doing alkanes, so everything has to be single bonds. Then you'll fill in missing bonds so that all of your carbons have four total. And then you'll fill those in using the hydrogen atoms. Now you'll have a formula that tells you how many hydrogen atoms you need to use but if you give all of the carbons four bonds, you should be using the correct amount. So first you start off with drawing your carbons in a chain, linking them together with single bonds. So this first example, we've got C6. Then if I go around and give each carbon four bonds total, I should use the 14 hydrogens. So this carbon on the left currently only has one bond, so I'm gonna give it three hydrogens. This carbon, next carbon over has two bonds, so it needs two hydrogens. Same for the next several, two. Then the one on the end has one bond, so it's missing three hydrogens. So if you count those up, that's 14 hydrogens, just like the formula is asking for. So you don't have to go through and count electrons like we did with Lewis structures back in chapter seven. The next example has four carbons. So if we fill in to give all of the carbons four bonds, it should take 10. So the one on the end needs three. The two in the middle both already have two bonds, so they're missing two hydrogens each. And then the one on the right end needs three. So there are your 10 hydrogens. Again, pause the video, see if you can draw an alkane that has five carbons and you're not told hydrogens here, you can figure it out. So two times five plus two means you should have 14, no, sorry, 12, I can do math, 12 hydrogens, but see if you can draw that structure. All right, quick check if we have five carbons, the ones on the end both need three each. Then all of them in the middle need two, 
and that will add up to the 12 that you should have when there are five carbons. So drawing alkanes is relatively simple. Again, just connect all your carbon bonds with, or sorry, all your carbon atoms with single bonds, then fill in with hydrogens to make sure all carbons have four bonds total. The next piece for alkanes is to talk about what it looks like in three dimensions. So alkanes, because each carbon atom has four bonds, if we think back to figuring out geometry, that would be four bonding groups. Anything with four bonding groups is tetrahedral. So all of the carbon atoms in this chain have a tetrahedral shape around them. That makes the molecule as a whole kind of has this zigzag pattern. And that will come back later when we learn how to draw these alkane structures using what we call line angle structures. Next is to talk about some physical properties for alkanes. So alkanes are typically gases or liquids at room temperature. What force do you think is dictating the melting point and boiling point? So again, think back to chapter seven, we had our intermolecular forces. We had London forces, dipole forces, and hydrogen bonding. If you remember, we talked briefly about hydrocarbons then saying that they are nonpolar, which they are. If they're nonpolar, they do not have dipole forces. There's no hydrogen bonding. So the only force that our alkanes have are London forces. London forces we figured out based on size and we determined that using molecular weight. So basically that meant the bigger the molecule, the higher the melting point and boiling point. So if we look at this graph, it kind of shows us that trend. Down at the bottom, we have the number of carbons. So if we have two carbons at negative 200 is the transition from solid to liquid. So that means it's going to melt at that temperature. Up at around negative 100 is when we transition from a liquid into a gas. So that's going to be its boiling point. This blue line up here represents approximately room temperature. So wherever you fall on this line is the state of matter for that particular alkane. So if we look at C3, at room temperature it's a gas. C4, room temperature is also a gas. C5, we're just into the liquid phase. Six, all the way up to 10, stays in the liquid phase at room temperature. But notice how the melting point and the boiling point increases as your number of carbons increases. So a few other comments on physical properties. All hydrocarbons are going to be insoluble in water. I just said that they are nonpolar. So that is, does make sense. We said like dissolves like. So polar compounds will dissolve in polar compounds. Water is polar. If our hydrocarbons are nonpolar, that means they will not dissolve in water. They will be insoluble. So water is polar, hydrocarbons are nonpolar, therefore they are insoluble in each other.